welcome you to this Q&A with La La Land. Uh, sorry? I know, I feel, I have to be the person who comes up here and talks and interrupts the music. How do you think I feel? It's horrible. I could sing for you. <laughs> At this time, please join me in welcoming some of the remarkable artists who worked on this movie. Uh, we have costume designer Mary Zofries. Andy Nelson. Sound designer and supervising sound editor Eileen Me. And supervising sound editor Millie Iatru. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Congratulations on a beautiful movie um, that has been stuck in my head since I saw it like three months ago. So happy the soundtrack is finally out so I can sing along. Um, so I'm curious, how did this project find its way to you and, and what was your reaction to the idea of doing a modern day original musical? You go ahead. Okay. Uh, I heard about this film uh, through my agent and I was a huge fan of Whiplash and also a long time, lifetime fan of musicals and old Hollywood musicals and I grew up watching them and you know, when I was 10 I wanted to be a Broadway dancer. So it was, uh, when I heard about the script and Damien had cut together a group of, a short to get the movie greenlit and I also saw that short. It was a compilation of all the films that he loved that inspired him when he was before, you know, when he was writing this film, which was, I think he first thought this up in his head, he said about six or seven years ago. Uh, and so I heard about it, I read the script, I saw the short, and I was in. So I met with him and just prayed that he liked me and that I could design the film, and he hired me. So that's how it happened for me. Andy? Um, for me, it was a little different. I, I was actually uh, working on, a, on, a, on another picture, and I got a phone call from them, and you want to come talk to me about uh, this picture, and I, I've been a big fan of Whiplash, and I was very excited to meet him. Um, I think uh, I've been lucky enough to do some musicals over the years, and I think uh, part of it was that, and uh, we just sat, we, we literally had a half hour break, and he came over to see me, and we just, uh, we talked about movies, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we just sort of got to know each other, we didn't really even talk about this particular film, it was more just the movies he liked, the movies I'd been inspired by and been able to work on when I was uh, starting out in, in the business. And um, we hit it off, and he said to me, I'd love you to do the picture. So that was about six months before we did it. Because I had come on as a sound mixer for the movie. I don't do the production sound on the set. I just do the final soundtrack. So I'm always one of the last, and Eileen as well. She comes on a little earlier, as she'll tell you, but we, we're, we're kind of the last creative process. So, um, um, you know... It was a wonderful experience. I love Damien. He's a genius. He really is. Eileen? Um, so I got hired, I guess, maybe shortly after um, Damien met Andy. Um, so um, I guess through different like suggestions and referrals, um, um, through maybe thanks to Andy and you know, uh, post supervisor, um, um, Damien met me and uh, I read the script. Uh, you know, uh, it was a very different script in my mind, for especially for a musical. Um, so I met him and uh, Tom Cross and Jordan Horowitz, and um, at that time they were about started cutting their director's cut, and uh, so we started dis discussing about um, how he liked it to be um, almost like grounded. Um, soundscape wise and um, um, almost I don't know he mentioned like Raging Bull kind mm -hmm. of um, so um, and also he wants to avoid um, the some of the pitfalls of, of some musicals where you know um, when it goes into a singing moment you don't want to sound make it feel it, you want to avoid the audience from feeling like you're suddenly listening to it in the studio it just has to be natural um, so uh, and to have like different music coming out from different parts, like from a car and stuff like that. Um, but um, so we discuss ideas and stuff, and um, I guess a few days later, I yeah heard that, that I got hired. So great. Yeah. 
And um, I've worked on other shows with Eileen um, as co-supervisors, and um, once Eileen looked what she was going to do, and she asked me if I wanted to work on it, and I was like, yes, I definitely <laughs> want to. I love working on musicals, and this one sounded amazing. And then, yeah, so that's how I got involved. Andy, I know, obviously, you worked most recently, I think, on Les Miserables, but have any of you worked on other musicals before? Yes, I worked on Hairspray and Rock of Ages. Ooh. Rock of Ages. <laughs> <laughs> we had a musical number in Hail Caesar, but I was gonna prior say. to that, no. Hopefully, there'll be some more in the future. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm hoping. Um, so, what set of challenges did this film present to you that maybe you hadn't encountered before? Me? Sure. Okay. Sorry, you're next to me. You're going to have to go first. Um, a challenge. Oh, well, designing for for dancing in a film is is different and and takes a different consideration to, from the beginning. And uh, but there was very much the same approach that you do for any film. And that you just think about it in a, you have to think about it practically and also cinematically. And uh, we had we had just a very consolidated amount of prep time. It was pretty short for how ambitious the film was. We had really, I mean, I had a total of eight weeks. My first week was, I, I've said this in other interviews, and I apologize if anybody has heard this before, but we had this three-day meeting with Damien, the production designer, the set decorator, and myself, and we went through the script page by page. And we went in such great great detail because the film, to watch it, you, we wanted it to have uh, this magical feeling, and there were several films that Damien had, had asked us to watch, again, if we hadn't already seen them. And we talked about those at great length, and how do they achieve that? And how you achieve it is through a great amount of almost choreography, even though we weren't doing the dance choreography, but between myself and set and production des production design, costume design, and cinematography. And so to get that kind of coordination and detail in such a short amount of time, like after that week, it was seven weeks, and we manufactured all of Emma's clothes that she dances in. We manufactured everything that's a, that Ryan wears. And, and it was... It was a lot, and then there's like dance numbers, and so we were, it was like ready, set, go. And we just, that was the challenge. And we didn't have a ton of money. It was 12 million below the line, and uh, that's very ambitious for, you know, big Hollywood locations that are not cheap. I mean, it is, you know, the, it, there's a lot of things that have to shut down to shoot on a highway. And, uh, so we were, we had limited resources, but we also had a lot of cooperation from, um, some companies and we had uh, people just really kind of were excited about this movie and willing to, we did it with a really skeleton crew and just rolled up our sleeves and so that part was sort of challenging but it was so, mo you were, everyone was so motivated by the project and by Damien and we were we were talking in the lobby because we never get to meet, ever. <laughs> and we were saying when we were making the movie, like. It was so exciting, and like tears would come in my eyes when we were shooting the musical sequences, and and then you're like, you're like, it's either going to be the greatest movie, or people are going to be like, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> and uh, no, I good. asked them if they, excuse me. It is good. Uh, yeah. It's good about, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, that was the biggest challenge of the time and money and just resources, but. Uh, it was like you were just propelled, like mm -hmm. just like just get it done, and it was just. Honestly, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. Um, so, anyway. Um, so for me, it was, um, <clears throat> I was, you know, I look back on, on as, when you're putting a soundtrack together, you, you're trying to identify this, the signature of the film. And so Damien, very, very um, hands-on in terms of how he wants it to be, how he wants it to sound, which is great. I love strong directors, and he's a very strong director. Um, <clears throat> you know, I look back at the films like Les Miserables and uh, Evita and Phantom, which I've been involved in, and even back to Moulin Rouge, and um, they all had elements that I sort of pulled from for this, but this, this was a little more challenging because it's, it, there was some live singing, which is fantastic. You can't beat live singing, and there's two big numbers in this that are, that are sung live. And, uh, and then there are some... Uh, songs that you can't do live, it's just impractical, so you have to do a sort of playback version. So then it's kind of blending those to make them feel seamless. Um, 
you know, I don't think of it as a musical in that sense because I think the film is bigger than that. I think it's it's a it's got music, it's got songs, it's got dancing, it's got drama, it's got humour. Um, so for me, it was just sort of pulling all those threads together and finding the voice of the film. And um, as I say, Damien's a wonderful director to be involved with, and he, um, he he certainly knew what he wanted. And we just worked very collaboratively on on the stage while we were mixing and. Um, that's what you just saw, so we were, we were very happy with it. Um, so, uh, for me, I'm mostly doing um, design, effects, backgrounds, foley kind of stuff, um, and uh, mixing them in with uh, Andy. Um, so, uh, the, no, Ellie is like one of the characters in the film, so um, sound-wise, um, we have to kind of help reflect what we see is so beautifully, you know, shot and um, um, so, and also it will also help um, ground some of the um, moments when, you know, because that's so often there's all this music and when it goes into the fantastical moments, um, Damien um, earlier on had decided to have it without any sound, no dialogue, nothing, it's just the music. And um, so to have uh, a soundscape play uh, around it, before it, or slowly, gradually uh, taking it out, um, you know, may help bring, elevate the, um, the moments when it goes into fantasy. Um, so for me, um, finding the right sounds and something interesting that could, um, you know, like maybe like an interesting kabai or anything simple like that um, that could help reflect, give the, the, the soundscape some depth. Um, and also um, the dance foley, um, um, because, you know, like say for example in duet, um, it was when it was shot. It had like pre-recorded sounds there, so we had we had to replace it with Foley dance beat. And um, in post, um, midway through, um, Damon decided to um, try to replace that beat with tap shoe sounds, uh, even though it was a flat soul choreography. Um, so we had Mandy Moore and her dancers come in, and we were trying, we were researching how to get that classic. Um, Fred and Ginger, MGM kind of sound for the tap. So um, we did many different tries, a couple over different days, different takes, and then after a while, we put it all together and uh, had Mandy Moore to come on to the stage to play for her, just to make sure that, like, for a dancer's point of view, they um, think that is the real deal. So um, yeah, just a little bit of foley that, like, when they're singing, we gotta like have it in the same rhythm as the music or the sound, the pitch uh, of the horns um, against the music and stuff like that. So, um, so, and of course Damien is very specific in every single thing, every stuff, every load of things. Uh, he's very specific um, to it, so it's been a fun experience. For me, my biggest concern was, um, and I know uh, Amy spoke about this earlier, is the transitions from the production sound going to the singing. And um, I was very lucky in that, like, for example, audition was live singing. So it was a really nice transition where she's speaking and almost in a whisper, and then she starts singing in a whisper. And it just was a really seamless transition. Um, but on some of the other ones, like, like uh, Duet, which was done to playback and goes into like something recorded in the studio, um, it, it, I feel like the, tra it, the transition worked. And one of the reasons is that besides Eileen sound design, we, we had some of the production background trail out to kind of cover the transition. We used the same mics in the recording studio and on the ADR stage that they used on the set. So we kind of keep those similar, and then you manage to you know, blend it all together. So for me, that's always the biggest challenge, because even as a little kid, when I watched old, mu old musicals, I could tell, like, oh, that's different. That sounds really <laughs> different, you know? And um, I, I, feel, I feel like in this film, it, the transi transitions worked really well. I'm really happy about that. Mm -hmm. 
And what about just the practical challenge of like, you know, something like this scene that is shot in outdoor LA, not on a soundstage. I mean, was that difficult to take out the actual sounds of LA? Um, well, we once the singing starts, it there was there was no sound. Mm -hmm. It was you know um, everything in that part is the music and whatever. Uh, and um, I still have a really light layer of the same background stuff, the crickets and distant traffic, but it's just played really low. And then the whole idea is so it's not noticeable. <laughs> so. Um, um, and then, you know, gradually bring it back up when the song was ending. Um, so we don't, hopefully, the audience won't be able to jump. So I can speak for the actors. The hardest part was doing that scene in all in one take, which is yeah. was. Yeah. It was six and a half minutes of dialogue, singing, dancing at magic hour. So the pressure is like, if you don't get it right in 10 minutes, you've lost the shot. So it was kind of an intense and magical. I remember everyone was really yeah. nervous and uh, and even the actors and I but it was an incredible when they got the take. We did it we did it over two two nights. We had shot other things during the day and went up there to Magic Hour and it was up in Griffith Park. And uh, I think it for, in total both times we shot for about an hour. And so they, it was about a total of 15 to 16 takes. You guys might know that more than I um, both between both nights, and it was incredible. Wow! Yeah, all one take. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah and I remember Mandy when we were doing the taps here. She was commenting on during the production. Um, it's uh, because it's all in one take, and it's also that um, they have danced up slope, mm. even though it didn't look mm. that way. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a little challenging for them. Uh, you want to take some questions from the audience if you have one, just raise your hand. We can start right here in the front. Uh, well, fantastic. Um, what were the films that inspired this? Yes, I was going to ask that actually, the films that Damien asked you to watch. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was uh, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, mm -hmm. The Young Girls of Rochefort, and Lola, all three of which are Jacques Demy films. And they are, he was a, film, a French filmmaker. Those were made in the 60s, and they were inspired by earlier MGM films, such as Singing in the Rain and Bandwagon. And uh, we talked about those films. We also talked about uh, Swing Time, Fred and Ginger. Uh, we talked about Boogie Nights. Really? Yeah, for the scene, for the pool party, it was a reference. We would call them comps, and uh, Boogie Nights was one of the comps for the pool party. Boogie Nights and Catch Me If You Can. Just, it's just a language. Like, you have to have a visual language when you're, you know, you can't just speak in abstracts all the time because everybody has a different interpretation. So it helps to kind of, like, put a thumbprint on everything that you're kind of going for. And the, but those three Jacques Demy films were, I think, the biggest inspiration for everyone. What about for you guys? I was surprised to hear Raging Bull was um, sort of an influence, but it kind of makes sense. That, that came up during the interview. So, And then the other thing uh, I mentioned was Boogie Nights. Um, um, and Hope Fiction. Yeah. yeah. Um, Singing in the Rain. Um, See, that one makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and of course, I'm not always sure, but, but um, you know, although that's a much older kind of musical web as far as sound code, it's not as much. You know, this, this short that Damien had made also had things like Strictly Ballroom, Moulin Rouge, um, and a fairly remember just moments that were inspiring, so you kind of got the feeling of what he was trying to insinuate in the moments during the moments of the script and uh, those were a few. Uh, we have one way in the back. I was curious in the um, in the mix did you work with the score mixer or did you take all the separated pieces because I heard a lot of cool stuff from the uh, yeah, um, I met again because I was basically hired six months or so before I started on it Practically, the good thing about that, and I've learned this over the years with, with other films, is you know this collaboration. So we we quite early on had a big round table with myself and all the music department, and we talked about <coughs> you know their work, how, what they were going to supply me with. I was able to suggest a layout that would work for me, and knowing that the visuals and what I would 
you know, expect to have separated. So they would prepare it in groups. Uh, obviously, um, you know, the orchestral parts were all separated from the piano parts, separate from all the jazz pieces, which were individually separated, bass, drums, uh, piano, obviously. And um, uh, all the vocals, of course, completely separate. And then, um, <clears throat> because for me, you know, I needed to, until I, until I actually put this picture up on the screen, it's hard for me to know exactly how I'm going to balance something, but, you know, I, I, I need to have that flexibility. But on the other hand, if, it's, if I have too much material, I just can't move quickly enough through it. So it's kind of collaborating with the, the, the scoring mixer to provide the, the groups that I needed that I could work with fairly swiftly, um, but give me as much flexibility as possible. And, uh, and Nick Baxter was the scoring mixer and he did a fantastic job.